March 18th, 2008. She went to a local grocery store and she didn't come home. I was thinking the worst in which with each day, my desperation and my panic um, increased exponentially because the longer I went without any word from my daughter. I feared the worst and the, and, and the worst to me at that time was thinking that she was dead. And I thought that that was the worst until she was recovered and we found out what had happened to her. Human trafficking and slave trade dates back to several thousand years ago. However, the 1400s are recorded as the beginning of European sex trafficking. The volume of trafficking later increased throughout the 1600s as the development of plantation colonies took off. The purpose of the agreement was to protect women, young or old, from being involved in the white slave traffic. White slavery referred to the forcing or deceiving a white woman or girl into prostitution. It generally stood as a moral action against the trafficking of women. The suppression of the white slave traffic was changed to traffic in women and children so that everyone was included with no discrimination to race, age, or gender. In addition, two major studies were conducted, one in the West and one in the East, in an attempt to find out the real status of trafficking in these areas. This, in turn, was a step towards gaining more insight about the issue of human trafficking. Women were housed in what were known as comfort stations, the conditions in these stations were atrocious, with each woman detained in a small cubicle and received beatings and other tortures if they were defiant. The Japanese government set up these stations in hopes of preventing rape crimes in public, prevent the spread of STDs, and to provide comfort for soldiers so they wouldn't tell military secrets. Third parties were usually arrested under the involvement of running brothels, living on the earnings from sex work, capturing and imprisoning people in prostitution, etc. Unfortunately, this act maintained to be faulty and failed to protect women who may have been forced into prostitution and forced them from brothels into more dangerous areas. The act made an effort to control trafficking. However, it was clear that it needed to be reformed. Actions against trafficking developed such as enforcing international conventions on trafficking and human slavery, addressing the factors that encouraged trafficking, setting up effective law enforcement and institutions who would work to end trafficking both nationally and internationally and implementing programs including educational and rehabilitation institutions. After learning about the existence of a brothel near their college, these two individuals began to envision a society where modern day slavery is eliminated. Their vision became a reality through the Polaris Project, which today is a leading nonprofit working to stop human trafficking. 57 of these suffocated to death while being transported after being confined in a seafood container where the air conditioning system malfunctioned. There ended up being 67 victims who survived the journey and they told of how they had hopes of finding work in Thailand, but conditions in the Lowry suddenly became unbearable. This case involved several young females who were brought to the United States illegally with fake passports. They then used these fake passports to obtain visas. They were discovered by the National Immigration Agency and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. A various individual and group events took place in an attempt to increase awareness about human trafficking among the general public. The Alliance to End Human Trafficking, an anti-trafficking coalition, began a campaign to ask the government to take a serious look at trafficking by renewing the Trafficking Victims Protection Act. The Trafficking Protocol is the first global legally binding instrument on trafficking in over half a century and the only one with an agreed upon definition of trafficking in persons. One of its purposes is to facilitate international cooperation in investigating and prosecuting such trafficking. 
Another is to protect and assist human trafficking victims with full respect for their rights as established in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Though human trafficking occurs throughout the world, two countries that stand out amongst the rest are Iran and India. Fariba får plötsligt besök av sin syster och jag får veta något som hon inte berättat för mig. Något om hennes man och stora kärlek. Iran is a major crossroads in the world of human trafficking involving prostitution, drugs, and forced labor. It stands as a central hub for the organized system between Pakistan, Afghanistan, and the Gulf states. Afghan, Pakistani, Europeans, Chinese and Iraqi women are the most common race to be trafficked into Iran to be forced to work as prostitutes. These women are either kidnapped or are homeless and living on the streets desperate for food and money. Others are rape victims who have been shunned by their families after the act and are forced into degrading work of prostitution just to survive. On average, there are about 84,000 females in prostitution. Many of them are on the streets. Others are in the 250 brothels that reportedly operate in the city some of which happen to be as young as 8 and 10, or as old as 35. And with such a high poverty level in a third world country, the need for food and money increases with every demand, leading parents to sell their children into trafficking. Our prostitutes and clients and pimps and madams and stray dogs and heaps of garbage and... This is a district that is completely given to prostitution and, and pimping women and I'm taking young girls and pushing them into the same industry. You know, I try to understand or to imagine how a 10-year-old girl is doomed to be sold for sex. Similar to Iran, India is also struggling to combat the growing horrors of human trafficking. 95% of women and girls are trafficked within the country for the purposes of commercial sexual exploitation and forced marriage, especially in those areas where the sex ratio is highly skewed in favor of men. Victims of trafficking are constantly transported to Mumbai, India, Asia's largest sex industry center, from Nepal and Bangladesh. They are then sold for less than $100 in the Middle East and Europe, where they are held in debt bondage. The government of India does in fact prohibit some forms of trafficking for commercial sexual exploitation through the Immoral Trafficking Prevention Act. These laws are ineffectually enforced, however, and they prescribe penalties, a maximum of three years in prison, are not sufficiently stringent. These horrifying facts of Iran and India's involvement in human trafficking tend to astound many. But what seems to leave people in even more shocked is the fact that such crimes occur here in Sacramento, California as well. Sacramento is not only rated as the second largest city in the United States for sex trafficking, but victims involved range from the ages of 11 to 16. New at 6 tonight, it is a Sacramento dirty little secret. One of 18 U.S. cities singled out by the FBI as a hotspot for human trafficking, including child prostitution. One of those victims is telling her story tonight. As Danielle Lee reports, she hopes it motivates others to watch for signs of trouble and do something about it before it's too late. I was slapped once, I was spit on. Stacy Lundgren says her middle school years were pure hell. It got to the point where eighth grade, it, I was tormented a lot um, to the point where I tried to kill myself. The victim of relentless bullying, she turned to her family, her teachers, and other trusted adults for help. No one listened. This was what drove me to the internet of just, that was my escape from everything. And so that was where he kind of came, came in. Stacy struck up an online friendship with a 22-year-old man. She was just 14 years old. We ended up meeting at a local school, and he picked, he picked me up. 
here I am, 14, and he's 22, and I was like, well, I must be cool, because I'm, I'm, a 22-year-old isn't interested in me. He gave her the attention she craved. I thought that he loved me, but it was a relationship, but it was twisted. Contrary to Iran and India, Sacramento maintains a different system of human trafficking. Victims in the area are taken emotionally rather than physically. Sex traffickers take advantage of young, vulnerable, depressed women who are in search of filling a hole in their lives. Typical victims consist of girls who come from unstable backgrounds, such as being an orphan or runaway, and in turn succumb to the comfort that the traffickers supposedly offer them. And oftentimes, traffickers even pose as fatherly figures to their slaves. For this reason, when the police rescue women and children from trafficking, they habitually go back to the street within days. However, there is still hope to combat against all these forms of human trafficking. Our people and our children are not for sale. But for all the progress that we've made, the bitter truth is that trafficking also goes on right here in the United States. It's the migrant worker unable to pay off the debt to his trafficker. The man lured here with the promise of a job, his documents then taken and forced to work endless hours in a kitchen. The teenage girl beaten, forced to walk the streets. This should not be happening in the United States of America. As president, I directed my administration to step up our efforts, and we have. For the first time at Hillary's direction, our annual trafficking report now includes the United States, because we can't ask other nations to do what we are not doing ourselves. We've expanded our interagency task force to include more our federal partners, including the FBI. The intelligence community is devoting more resources to identifying trafficking networks. We strengthen protections so that foreign-born workers know their rights. And most of all, we're going after the traffickers. New anti-trafficking teams are dismantling their networks. Last year, we charged a record number of these predators with human trafficking. We're putting them where they belong, behind bars. In more depth, organizations such as California Against Slavery, Global Alliance Against Traffic in Women, and Stop the Traffic are constantly spreading knowledge of the dangers that the world holds and how to stay safe from them. Though in order to be successful, these preventative organizations need your help. Bring awareness to your peers, family, and friends, and contact authorities for any suspected victims of human trafficking. Your actions can make a difference.